All right, hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors on to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do rule exceptionally well. And also, Shalom, citations, mercy, and blessings to all you sincere brothers out there pushing this word with truth and with faith. My name is Tabawa Amath of Great Millstone Northwest. Um, coming back with another lesson. Lord willing, it'll be uh, quick, and Lord willing, it'll be edifying. All right. And um, I think I'm going to title this uh, Confidence Grows As We Get Closer. I'm speaking about uh, we're, we're getting closer to uh, the day of the Lord, which we know cometh as a thief in the night. And as it is approaching, uh, we are noticing the, the different ways of the world, the different um, turns and twists that it's taking. And uh, with you noticing that, with you being able to notice that uh, through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, um, your confidence, meaning your faith, all right, because confidence means with faith. So you being with faith is supposed to increase, it's supposed to grow, all right. And I got a couple of scriptures that's going to help me uh, support that message, and Lord willing, this will be edifying. We're going to start in the book of Hebrews, um, the 10th chapter, at around verse 19, um, and we'll read a couple of these verses, all right. Hebrews 10 and 19 Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness, the holiest, I'm sorry, into the holiest by the blood of Yahweh Shai, by a new living way, all right, which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of the heavenly father, let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith. Having our faith sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay, so what it's saying here, what Paul is breaking down here is that uh, due to the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai has done for us. All right. Um, if you was to read the chapter before the actually a uh, couple chapters before it, even until now, he was speaking about um, the things that was done uh, uh in the past uh, by Moses uh, versus the things that are done by Yahweh Shai. And he's showing a similitude on um, how the first covenant, the first um, uh, covenant with the Heavenly Father that he had with Israel, uh, the difference between that covenant and the covenant that he has with Israel through Yahweh Shai. And the similitude on uh, the blood that was shed uh, to take away sins. Okay. And uh, he was going in and talking in on all of that. But uh, that point is there that the boldness, if we have the boldness to enter, <clears throat> to enter in, to be a partaker of that, uh, that grace that comes with Yahweh Shai's blood, then we are supposed to be coming with a full, uh, a full assurance of faith. OK, with our heart uh, solely focused on Yahweh Shai and not focused on our own personal gain. All right. Not focused on trying to get rich or build a kingdom within Esau's kingdom or any of that kind of uh, of madness, but uh, drawing near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Now, a lot of people that's out there that are aware that they're Israelites, their their um, hearts are not sprinkled from an evil conscience conscience all right they are not they are not thinking in that spiritual manner they're still they're still seeking ways to be able to please themselves all right they're still seeking ways to be able to get over on the next man they're not they're not aware that this thing is is only about the glory and the glorification of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai all right they're not aware of that fact they think that you know, just because the scriptures say that they got to work out the salvation with fear, their own salvation, they're not taking it into account that it's got to be done with fear and with trembling. All right. And that you're not supposed to be asserting yourself over the, the next man's um, servants, you know, and we are all servants of Yahweh Shai. That's why when John, all right, in the book of Revelation, when he seen that angel and he dropped that angel said, hey, don't do that. OK, I'm your fellow servant. Same thing happened with Ezra. All right. The angel told him, like, hey, look, I serve the Heavenly Father just as much as you do. You know. Obviously, he didn't use those exact words, but 
um, that that point is there is that we're we're all fellow servants of Yahweh Hashem Shai. So for you to be trying to make yourself a king, hey, Yahweh Shai is the king, man. King David is the king. All right, which we already had King David in this in this uh, generation, man. Okay, we already have a man who is a uh, 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 titled king, but we serve the king that's that's in the heavens. That's uh, that we hope is coming back soon. Anyway, um. It says, verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and, and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. And oh man, is the manner of some uh, to, to forsake that assembling uh, together. You got men out there that don't believe that it's important to have a brotherhood. All right. That's why it's easy for them to try to make themselves some type of dictator over over brothers. All right. As if they came to serve them, not as if they came to serve the Lord. All right. It says, um, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we're supposed to be constantly growing um, in in uh, in our confidence. All right. Meaning our faith. OK, we're supposed to be growing very confident in our faith, you know, because without that great uh, uh, confidence. And we were speaking about this uh, this past week at camp. If without that great uh, confidence, how do you expect to make it through certain trials and tribulations, man? All right. If, if Daniel didn't have that confidence while he was in the lion's den, those lions would have picked up on that. OK, the three holy children in the, uh, uh, the fiery furnace. All right. Without that faith, without that confidence in the Lord, you know, they wouldn't have been able to make it make it through that, you know, similar with Jonah and uh, the great fish, uh, similar with um, the seven brothers spoken about the Maccabees, similar with Yahweh Shai himself. All right. When Satan came and tempted him, Yahweh Shai held forth his faith, man. All right. And he told Satan boldly with that with that confidence, like, hey, man, you can't you can't you can't you're not on my level, basically. OK, um, let's grab the book of Isaiah, the 30th chapter real quick. Isaiah chapter 30, um, verse 15. I might want to read up. No, I'll read right here. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. It says, for thus saith the Lord power, the Holy One of Israel in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And uh, and ye would not, but ye said no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore, shall ye flee? Uh, we will ride upon the swift. Therefore, shall they that pursue you be swift? All right, because you got guys that want to trust more in these physical things than in the Lord. When your confidence is supposed to be in the Lord, man. Okay, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. All right. That's where your strength is supposed to come. Your strength is supposed to come from the confidence in the Lord. Just like the examples that I just spoke about, man. All right. Just like the examples I just spoke about. Their confidence was in the Lord, man. Samson, when he had his confidence in the Lord and he had his strength, couldn't nobody mess with him. All right. Slaying, slaying thousands of men with the jawbone of an ass. That's a great, that's a great feat, man. Okay. And you think he, he would have been able to do that without the Lord on his side? Hell no. You know? So you got to you got to be bold that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is with you, not to the point that you're cocky. All right. Not to the point to where you think you're something, because none of us are anything, man. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But you got to be bold that you actually believe in the Heavenly Father and you believe these scriptures to be true. So when the scriptures say that anyone that put their trust in the Lord is not confounded, you can believe that that is true. All right. You can believe that that that's going to actually uh, uh, hold up. When when the time comes for it, man. All right. When the Most High says that he doesn't um that there's some that don't have to taste of death. You got to believe that that's true and that there is some men that's here that's not going to have to die. All right. They're going to be able to uh, 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 inherit the kingdom of heaven, meaning they're going to be able to walk into the kingdom of heaven rather than having to, to die and, uh, uh, you know, uh, wait their turn to come back as a, as a little baby. Granted, there is a lot that's going to have to come back as a little baby because they're not trying to get their mind right uh, towards the Heavenly Father. That's that's true. And that's evident. All right. That's that's clear to see, you know, but there is some men 
the water to Yahweh Hashem Yahshua, there is a few that, that aren't going to have to taste of that. Okay? And that's all written in the scriptures. Okay? Let's grab, um, let's grab 1 John. We'll grab 1 John uh, chapter 5. Uh, we'll read verse 14. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. All right? So that's that's great confidence to have is to know that when you're praying for things, for these spiritual things, for uh, uh, wisdom, knowledge and understanding okay, of the scriptures, for the, the right way to get out of uh, uh, certain certain perils that he may be uh, putting on you, man, for the strengthening of your brotherhood. All right. For more faith. All right. For more charity. So on and so forth. Things that's according to his will. He hears you, man. All right. Don't be asking to win. The lottery, the mega million lottery, because if he was to give you that, you would straightway forget the Heavenly Father. You know, the people that, that receive that is people that don't, you know, they don't they don't know the Lord, man, because they they're part of the world. The world loves its own. All right. You as an Israelite, you as a man that's, that's seeking Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shai, you're not supposed to be seeking that monetary gain like that, man. What are you going to do with a multi million dollars, man, a multi billion dollars? What are you going to do with that? You know, how are you going to help further the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai with that? You wouldn't. All right. As soon as you was to receive that money, you would straightway forget uh, the, the Lord that you serve, man. All right. And if it, if it wasn't an immediate thing, you would slowly fade because that, that's that's a lot of money, man. All right. That's a lot of money, man. And we know that when men get money, they, they forget their they forget their power. Either way, um, it says, and if we know. That he hears us. This is verse 15. And if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. Okay, that's getting into something else. But hey, that's the point. Okay. Our petitions. Uh, we, we have the petitions that we desire of him, man. We got things that we want to ask for being those spiritual things. We want things that's going to help us reach that, that door of salvation. All right. We don't want things that's going to help us uh, further ourselves into into the dark. All right. We want the things that helps us continually see light and emit light to where others can see light as well. All right. We're searching. We're searching for the truth, man. We're about the glorification of Yahweh Shai. We are not about uh, pushing ourselves to some type of level. All right. Or some type of standard other than the level that we need to be so we can properly uh, uh, teach this word so we can properly glorify the Heavenly Father that that level hey, the most High gives you that. But we're not trying to put ourselves out there as if we're some great name. All right, because the name is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And there, that's that's what's important. All right. The name of Thabua is not important, you know, and that's just an example. Anyway, uh. Let's go to the book of Philippians. Uh, we'll go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Common scriptures be uh, read. It's, um, this is uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, I could do all things through Yahweh Shai, which strengthens me. Okay? Notwithstanding, ye have done well that ye did communicate with my affli uh, affliction. OK, I could do all things through Yahweh Shai, which strengthens me. All right. And if you don't have your faith truly in Yahweh Shai, how the hell is he going to be able to strengthen you? All right. How the hell is you going to be able to receive strength if you don't got that faith, man? That's just like the book of uh, what was that? Proverbs, uh, Proverbs three. Let's let's see if I can find this. Proverbs chapter three, verse twenty four. Nope. Proverbs twenty. Uh, Proverbs chapter three verse twenty six. I'm gonna read verse twenty five. It says, "Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh." And it's it's coming around again. All right, this is something that has happened in the past, and it's something that's gonna happen. It's gonna keep reoccurring until Yahweh Shai returns, man. And it's gonna have a great one that's gonna come where there's never been a day like it, and that's gonna be the day when the wicked actually gets judged. Okay, it says, um. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. And that's 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 a that's a great thing to, you know, to have inside your mind, man. All right. That's a great way to, to start to face the day 
to stare down the day with the boldness and confidence of Yahweh Bashim Shai, man. All right. What the hell can be presented to you that's going to shake up that faith? All right. <laughs> if there is an actual thing, I don't want to know about it, man. All right. If there is an actual thing, I don't want to know about it because I like to think that my faith can't be shaken. All right. I would like to think that my faith can't be shaken. I would like to think that I got full confidence in Yahweh Bashim Shai, man. And that there's nothing that's upon this earth that's going to be able to change that. All right. And guess what? So long as I do the will of the Heavenly Father, so long as I keep myself in order and, and continually work towards uh, perfecting myself to where I'm a great asset for Yahweh Hashem Shai, as long as I as long as I do that, I have no reason to think that the Most High will bring uh, such a thing upon me. OK. And, and, and you and you can, too. <laughs> That's a little inside joke for the camp. Anyway, um, I'm going to grab uh, one more scripture and I'm going to go ahead and close it out. This is uh, going to go back to the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter four, verse 16. OK, last last verse in here. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. OK, because we we have our high priest, which is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. We have everything set up. Only thing we got to do is bring ourselves to the marriage, which we are bidden to. All right. And have on the, the correct garment. All right. Meaning that we got to we got to just get ourselves on, on point to the very best of our ability down here, man. All right. Not boasting ourselves or raising ourselves to a higher level, but allowing the spirit to 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 prove forth everything that is true. That's basically all we got to do, man. As we grow closer to the day of destruction, our confidence is supposed to be growing. Our faith is supposed to be growing. All right. There shouldn't be anything that's going to take you away from Yahweh Bashim Shai. No matter if Esau come and snatch you up, he come and snatch you up and he places you in prison. And in prison, you're surrounded by all these um, wicked ass motherfuckers, man. You're not supposed to go and align yourself with these wicked motherfuckers for protection. Hey, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai Bashim Rakakwadash got your back, man. All right. And if you don't, if you don't, if you don't think he can protect you, then you shouldn't be wasting. You shouldn't even be wasting your time, uh, uh, you know, to actively serve him. All right. If you don't think the most High is going to protect you, you don't got you. You shouldn't waste your time uh, serving him. All right. Me, I believe that the most High will protect me either way. Uh, that's the lesson. Lord willing, this has been edifying. Lord willing, uh, the message was received. Again, the praise and the glory it goes on to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors on to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that do real exceptionally well. Constantly feeding, uh, feeding the flock. And also, um, Shalom, citations, mercy, and blessings to you sincere brothers out there pushing this word with truth and with faith. Until next time, Shalom.